All right, so our first video was very short and very easy. This one, not so much. This one's going to be a lot longer, a lot more relationships, and we're going to pull together all the integrals that we have not talked about so far. So in the first part, if we have a function u equals g of x, which can't be 0 because we're dividing by it, and g is differentiable, then the integral involving 1 over u, 1 over u du, is the ln of u plus c. We don't put ln in our integrand at this point. We'll learn about that when we do integration by parts after the AP exam. But we can take the antiderivative of 1 over u, because that is ln. And the reason for that, remember, is that the derivative of ln of u is 1 over u. Don't forget to add your constant. We take a look at some uh, differential equations in here where we have to solve for our, our constant values as well. A couple of examples for you. In this first one, u is going to be 3x squared minus 5 du is 6x dx, so I have to multiply the whole thing by 1 6, so it's 1 6 integral of 1 over u du. Uh, the, obviously, the x dx is that numerator, right? Go back to our substitution like we've done before, so it's 1 6 times the ln of the absolute value of 3x squared minus 5 plus my constant. going back to integrating by hand and we're going to we're going to get get into this quite a bit uh in the next uh couple of of, of sections. We can also do uh with our definite integral. So u in this case would be 9 minus 2x du would be negative 2 dx. We got to multiply the whole thing by negative 1 half. We also need to change our limits of integration. If I put 2 in here, I get 5. If I put 4 in here, I get 1. So it's an improper integral as well, 1 over u times du. Um, if I change that by taking out the negative, I could rewrite it as 1 half times the integral of 1 to 5 of 1 over u du, which is um, 1 half times the ln of the absolute value of u at 1 and at 5. And in this particular case, um, I get 1 half times the ln of 5 minus the ln of 1. The ln of 1 is 0, so really this answer will be just 1 half ln of 5. So we can do some, some definite integral stuff in here. Um, see if I got another one. I do have another one for you. In this case, let's just try another example of what, you know, when used different ways. So say u is the ln of x, then du is 1 over x dx. So this part right here becomes du. This part in here um, is u to the 1 half. So really it's u to the 1 half du, and it has nothing to do with ln in terms of antiderivative but we're just you know, incorporating the derivative piece of it as well. So really what happens is this is u to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves, which is multiplied by 2 thirds. So 2 thirds ln of x to the 3 halves plus my constant. One of the easier integrals that we have is e, because e, just like it was in our um, derivatives, the derivative of e to the u is e to the u times du dx. The antiderivative e to the u du is just e to the u. So uh, again, they're following the same type of situation there. So if we have something like this, then in um, you know our first example here, um, we're going to let u be 3 over x. So u is 3 over x, or 3x to the negative 1. Then du is negative 3x to the negative 2 dx, or negative 3 over x squared dx. And if that's true, then the x squared dx right there that I just underlined, that's negative 1 third of du. So I have negative 1 third times the integral of e to the u du, which is um, negative 1 third times e to the 3 over x plus my constant. If I put some limits in there, like if I just want to put limits in there and I put 1 and 2, um, you know, I get back to this step right here. I have negative 1 third integral e to the u du. And now if I put 1 in here, I get 3. And if I put 2 in here, I get 3 halves. 
again, um, it's an improper integral because this is one and a half, that's three. So it's really positive one third times the integral from three halves to three of e to the u du, which, you know, not nice numbers. It's just one third times e cubed minus e to the three halves. And 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 that's that's you know that's all I can do. There's not anything else that I can do without a calculator and evaluating that. I can't combine them or anything like that. Then now that we know um, the integral involving ln and involving e, um, oh, we can apply them into some differential equations. Okay, so if I have the derivative is given to me as this and I have the initial condition y is 4 when x is 0. If I integrate that derivative, integrate the 3e to the 2x plus 6e to the negative 3x dx, um, I integrate these individually, so I'm going to write it as 3 times the integral of e to the 2x plus 6, integral of e to the negative 3x dx. Uh, this should have a dx on it as well, sorry. In this case, in the first one, u has to be 2x, so du is 2dx. In this case, u is negative 3x, and du is negative 3dx. So on my first one, in the first one, I multiply by 1 half, so I get 3 halves times e to the 2x. Um, in the second one, I'm going to multiply by negative one third, so I'm going to get minus two e to the negative three x plus c, and that is y. If you plug in zero and four, you plug in zero here and zero here and four there. Um, when I plug in zero here, this is just three halves. This is minus two plus c equals four. So C is going to be uh, what that's negative one half, so four and a half roughly, somewhere in there. Okay, so, so my C value is is uh, four and a half. And then you can write the equation, um, the general equation for Y, by putting four and a half right back here for C. Four and a half right here. So all the things that we did before, all the stuff that we worked on before, like differential equations and finding area between curves and stuff like that, you can do again with E, E and LN, and 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 oftentimes you're going to see the AP folks are are going to uh, are going to put questions like that, and we'll do some questions like that um, um, from them from previous times. So again, this is the same idea where I had the graphs of E to the x going up here, I have the square root of x going right here and then it's bound by x equals 0. That's supposed to say 0, and x equals 1. So it's looking at for the area of this region right here. So it's just simply the integral from 0 to 1. The top graph is e to the x, the bottom graph is the minus the square root of x dx, and now we could integrate that by hand. I'm not going to. You go ahead and put it in your calculator if you want to see how to do that. I'm kind of hurrying along. Pause the video if you need to write stuff down, because I needed to get to the antiderivatives or the integrals involving our other trig functions which you don't know yet which are tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. If you have the tangent of u du that's negative 1 over, excuse me, negative ln of cosine of u plus c. Cotangent is positive sine. Secant is ln of secant plus tangent and cosecant is ln of cosecant minus cotangent. You can actually prove these pretty easily by doing, um, like for tangent, just writing it in terms of sine over cosine, and then let u be cosine. Um, the derivative du is going to be negative sine of x. That's why it becomes negative, and so on and so forth. If you want to see that in class, I'll gladly do that tomorrow. But otherwise, you just need to memorize these relationships so you have them. Um, so when we have things like this, x times the cotangent of x squared, then u is going to be x squared, du is 2x dx, multiplied by 1 half, so 1 half times the integral, the x dx, x dx, that goes away, it's part of the derivative, so cotangent of u uh, du, the 1 half stays out there, so the antiderivative in terms of cotangent 
is the ln of the absolute value of the sine, and then it's the sine of u, which is x squared, plus c. Um, AP folks, they don't um, beat you up too much about the, if they give you a question like this, they generally, this is a multiple choice type question, and then those absolute values will be put in there for you. And I haven't seen too much of this on the free response. Going on to another relationship in terms of tangent, um, and doing it in, in sorry about that, doing it in with the um, 0 to pi over 2 where I have my, my limits. So u is x over 2, du is uh, 1 half of dx, so I multiply the whole integral by 2, change my limits, they're going to be from 0 to pi over 4 of the tangent of u du. So now it's going to be, when I take my antiderivative, it's 2, it, uh, it's negative because the antiderivative of tangent is negative, times the ln of the absolute value of the cosine of u at 0 and pi over 4. Um, the negative 2 ln, so negative 2 ln, it's going to be cosine of pi over 4. Um, so, well, let's do that. Cosine of pi over 4. I'll write it out all the way. Uh, it's absolute value. Minus negative 2 ln of the absolute value of cosine of 0. Um, this part right here is square root of 2 over 2, so I have negative 2 ln of square root of 2 over 2. Uh, plus, these negatives cancel out, 2 ln of 1. That could have been a parenthesis, sorry. Okay. Uh, 2 times the ln of 1 is 0. Um, this negative is an exponent, so really that's 2 over the square root of 2 squared, so this just simplifies to ln of 2. Um, side note, this part is 0. You're okay with that, I hope. That is an exponent, so it's really the ln of square root of 2 over 2 to the negative 2. Negative means reciprocal of this, and then I square it. So I get the ln of the uh, 2 squared over square root of 2 squared. This part is 4, that part's 2, so that's where I got 2 from. Some of that stuff with ln and squaring it out and properties of logs and stuff like that gets to be a little bit confusing. Let's see what else I got here. How about some e to the 2x secant of e to the 2x? Combine a little bit of stuff we've been doing earlier. u is going to be e to the 2x. du is e to the 2x times 2 times dx. So this part right here is 1 half of du. So 1 half integral secant of u du. Um, the antiderivative of secant is ln, 1 half ln, absolute value, the secant of u plus the tangent of u plus my constant, plug e to the 2x back in there, 1 half ln, absolute value, secant of e to the 2x plus tangent of e to the 2x plus c. Again, it's you know it's more a matter of I got to memorize all this stuff like what's the antiderivative of secant, what's the antiderivative of tangent, cotangent. One more, um, one more. I'm going to do this one because this is a little bit of a challenge. I can't let u be the cosecant minus one. That's not possible because I then I have a derivative that involves uh, cosecant and cotangent, and that doesn't work. So I got to square this one out. So you got to be careful about this. It's cosecant squared of x minus 2 cosecant of x plus 1 dx, and that's just simply squaring the binomial. Now, when you go to take the antiderivative, you can do these individually. The antiderivative of cosecant squared is negative cotangent of x minus 2. The antiderivative of cosecant of x, which is what we're just working on, is ln of the absolute value of cosecant of x minus cotangent of x and then the antiderivative of 1 is simply x, and then plus your constant. So, I gave you just, there's a lot of notes there. Um, slow down the video, go back, rewatch it, stop it, copy down the relationships you need to know. 
but in summary what I had was antiderivatives of things like 1 over u, things involving e to the u, uh, stuff involving the other four trig functions, so tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. You're responsible for knowing each one of those and then taking the antiderivatives of that. And really, I think it's the next three assignments that we went through today pretty darn quickly. So I'll, I'll clarify in class. Um, and, and then once I clarify in class, um, you just re you're responsible for memorizing that stuff. And, and hopefully it will all make sense to you. So good luck on the assignments. And um, we'll see you soon.